So could you tell us who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, um, my name is Lauren Agavazorgi. I'm uh, a student here at Concordia and I am the coordinator for the Concordia Food Coalition. Um, so I work on a lot of different, uh, different projects with the Food Coalition, coordinating meetings and doing a lot of internal and external communication with them. Describe to us the history of the CFC in regards to the RFP process. Right. Um, so, the Concordia Food Coalition actually was founded anticipating uh, the the expiration of Chartwells's contract, which was the major food service provider for the past 15 years at Concordia, um, and it had just expired this past year in 2015. Um, so, we, a group of students, were anticipating. Uh, that this would expire about two or three years ago and so we created the CFC uh, hoping to um, prepare ourselves to submit a primarily student-run uh, alternative um, over, over these corporations that would likely be bidding on the new request for proposal that the uh, administration would be uh, publicizing in 2015. Um, and so over the past two to three years uh, after the Food Coalition was founded, students had been working on a project to um, propose an alternative food system to the administration. So could you describe how the CFC was involved in the RFP process? Yeah, so what we really wanted to uh, tackle was this corporate mon monopoly model that uh, Chartwell's had for the past 12 to 15 years at Concordia. Um, and so what we first decided to do was um, form a consortium of players. So we, we seeked out uh, different businesses in the Montreal uh, and greater Montreal area um, that uh, you know served organic food or that, share, that shared our values in general. So organic food, uh, sustainably produced food, um, and uh, you know, from farms and land that were as local as possible. Um, and so we, we wanted to get these, these players together to, um, to bid as a group, um, offering more diversity to students um, and catering to a diversity, a diversity of uh, dietary needs, from vegan and vegetarian uh, diets to students who may want to, uh, or may want to have access to halal and kosher meats um, and the like. So that's what we were, were trying to do with the consortium bid. So could you explain to us what happened with the CFC bid uh, with the RFP? Sure. Um, so what happened was we were in communication with all these consortium bidders um, over the past year and we uh, happened to find out in this process that uh, there were going to be some clauses in the, uh, the RFP contract that uh, wasn't necessarily going to allow us to bid the way we had hoped to bid um, as a group, so to speak. Um, and so we quickly decided that we would have to adjust the model we were going for and was in contact with um, an organization that's very prominent in uh, French post-secondary uh, educational institutions called Coopsco. Um, and they have a lot of experience uh, establishing cooperatives in, in universities and stage-ups across Quebec. Um, and so we were in communication with them and they agreed to be the main body submitting a bid, um, all the while respecting our model of uh, having all these smaller consortium players um, within their bid. Um, and so we were hoping to do that and we're working with them towards that until um, very soon before the application deadline for the request for proposal, uh, they backed out and so we weren't uh, able to, to submit a bid. Uh, for the request for a proposal and so we we encountered a lot of different obstacles first coming from the administration and and the ways in which they decided to go about um, designing their request for a proposal contract and you know with the organization that we uh, decided to work with that didn't end up coming through in the end unfortunately uh, so could you tell us what is wrong with the RFP process yes um, I have quite a few criti criticisms about the way the RFP process was held uh, this time around. Um, first things first, about the, the food advisory committee that they have to, to, to look at the or to evaluate the, the, the bids that are submitted. Um, 
It is ideally supposed to have representation from many bodies at the university. Um, we had a representative uh, for undergraduate students as well as graduate students. Um, I feel that it's very questionable how much uh, they were actually heard on the committee. Uh, I feel like a lot of um, decisions were already made and that they might have not had a great impact uh, being a student representative on that committee. Um, secondly, I think that you know the administration had promised us a lot of things would be included in this contract um, uh, that were in line with demands that students had made over the uh, years anticipating this new RFP. Um, things like having more locally procured food, having more organic food, um, and it, they just didn't they just didn't meet our demands the way we would have liked. Um, there are certain clauses in um, in the contract that say, you know, according to the season, we'll have this much uh, percentage of food being served uh, procured locally. But then, you know, you have to ask yourself, what is their definition of local, um, and and questions like that. So um, it remains very vague, and I don't think that those uh, demands are going to be fulfilled. Quite frankly. Um, lastly, I think that the whole process in itself, the contract, uh, the, the way that we're meant to bid on this contract is, is basically designed for a corporation. Um, we had a lot of different experiences that just kept pushing us aside. Um, for one, they had uh, pu you know, put this on a public tender website that's you know, owned by the government, um, which is you know, the process that you're supposed to take. Um, they had given us, or all bidders, all potential bidders, 20 days, not 20 business days, but 20 days to bid from the day that the uh, RFP was uh, made public to the deadline. Um, there was also uh, a mandatory meeting that all potential bidders had to attend that was less than a week after it had been published online. Um, and you know our organization that we were working with you know was not made aware and we had to kind of scramble to register them to go to the meeting and once we were at that meeting we happened to be introduced to the other corporations that would be bidding so um, and we were the only non-corporate uh, body so there was us and then there was Sodexo, Aramark and Chartwells and so we knew right away what we were up what we were up against um, uh, so, you know, right away you could see that there were only corporations bidding besides us. And furthermore, we found out that um, after the organization we were working with had already backed out, we had been notified that the deadline had been extended. So rather than being 20 days, uh, they, ha they, they had to extend the deadline, uh, you know, to something like one or two weeks later than the original date published, which uh, is funny because we can assume that even these large corporations weren't ready uh, with, you know, a complete bid to submit to the administration. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us what is wrong with the current model, uh, especially with Chartwells being around campus? Yeah. Um, so just to give a little bit of uh, background history, um, before we had Chartwells, Sodexo was actually the contracted food service provider at Concordia. Um, and they were only around for a few years before there were, you know, many, many cases of uh, food poisoning in the residence halls where they were primarily like, giving their, their service to, to resident students. Um, and so the administration was, you know, forced to sort of find an, another food service provider and then they ended up contracting Chartwells, uh, which is a subsidiary of, of Compass Group, um, which is a a multinational corporation uh, from the UK um, and so the the Chartwells contract was for a duration of uh, 12 years and they actually ended up staying for 15 upon I suppose negotiations with the administration um, and the way the food system is designed at Concordia is that um, there's about eight spaces in total that are contracted to the same uh, you know, body under this request for proposal contract. And so Chartwells has been uh, managing eight spaces over both our downtown and Loyola campuses for over 12 years. Um, and they also are the main uh, uh, providers of the resident students meal, pl meal plans. So this it means that as a resident student, one is uh, forced 
pretty much into um, buying into this meal plan as well, um, which costs well over a thousand dollars a semester. Um, and you know these food service providers aren't necessarily open at all times of day, so it's very restrictive to when and what students uh, in residence can eat. Um, yet they're paying just so much money, um, so it's it's quite problematic. And you know you could speak to almost any resident student at Concordia over, you know that were there for any year, and they have the same complaints to make about uh, about the food service providers. And you know it's understandable that it's it's quite a big capacity that these uh, food service providers need to serve, um, but it can very well be done in a more sustainable and a more sound way. Um, and so that's a, a, big, uh, a big problem with the food system here at Concordia. Uh, could you describe to us some alternatives to this big RFP process? Mm -hmm. um, so the Food Coalition has been working on a lot of projects that have, I believe, have greatly impacted the food system uh, nonetheless. Um, we work on a lot of, uh, you know, cooperative development. Um, you know, the Hive Cafe is a great example of that, how we've pretty much just incorporated ourselves without having to deal with administrative processes. Um, so I think that we should work towards developing even more student-led initiatives um, to, you know, ideally just create our own food system around these corporate monopolies that are, you know, inevitably on our campus. Um, but on the other hand, I think that in the next year we'd like to uh, tackle this, you know, the processes that the administration takes to go about these really big contracts that are, you know, otherwise out of our reach, that are almost impossible to kind of take, um, take into student hands. Um, and so I think uh, what a good uh, good approach would be in the next year is to sort of like get in on administrative processes and try and reform the way they go about doing these things and uh, have our voices heard a little louder than before. All the while kind of taking care of these cooperative uh, projects and student-led projects. Uh, when the contract is signed, it'll probably be about five more years before a new launch of uh, a new food service provider. Uh, what would you recommend to students in the future if they want to engage in the same kind of activist processes to change food services? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, I would advise students to kind of take the same approach that we have uh, in the sense of values. I think, uh, you know, getting local businesses that uh, share, um, you know, the value of like organic, locally produced food is really, uh, is really important. And I think um, really actively trying to distance ourselves from um, corporations and monopolies. Um, you know, we could have many different food service providers, but if they're still corporations, it's still going to be unsustainable. And you know, we could have a non-corporate model, but if it's just one body, it still uh, lacks diversity. And so. We're really trying to uh, address those issues. Um, but I think in the next five years, students really have to work towards uh, getting administ administration to acknowledge the fact that their processes are unjust and undemocratic and, and trying to reform that um, so that we can implement our values more concretely uh, and, and really have like administration uh, listen to us and you know not be able to ignore us. Could you explain to us what the CFC did in regards to the beverage contract? Yes, uh, so the CFC wasn't uh, very involved in the, the beverage contract uh, this time around because um, it came right after uh, the food RFP. Um, shortly after the deadline for the, for the food RFP, um, we heard news of uh, this renegotiation for a beverage contract as well. Um, and so administration had sent out to all Concordia students um, a small survey about, you know, maybe like, food, uh, sorry, drink choices that they wanted to see in vending machines on campus and uh, other related questions, but it still remained quite vague and um, we didn't feel like it addressed a lot of concerns that students have. Furthermore, um, it got us to thinking whether a beverage contract, uh, at least for vending machines on campus, was sustainable or if it could even be um, done in a sustainable manner. Uh, just because usually, the, I mean, the logos that we see on the sides of vending machines are often just Pepsi or Coca-Cola, and so, you know, is this really 
a feasible option for us or, or not when it comes to sustainability and, and making our food system more sustainable. Um, lastly, when it comes to consulting students, um, they did have their committee as they always do and they did attempt to have student representation on it and as far as I know there was uh, except that you know students were in the middle of exam period at the time that they were um, going over the bids for the contract and so um, I feel like it was strategically uh, a really bad time to have any sort of student voice um, involved in this process and that could have been done in another way had administration really um, really been concerned about uh, hearing what students had to say about what they wanted on campus when it comes to beverages.